So I just recently decided to get into painting as a bit of distraction and I just got thinking wouldn't it be cool to combine acrylic painting and blender in a unique workflow? Well I did it and found a fun and creative way to streamline my process to be able to make all sorts of painted scenes in this style. In my time lapse I'm just sketching out the outline and mixing the colours to match as close to my reference as I can. It doesn't have to be perfect, mine certainly isn't, but I'm hand painting all the UVs for the sunflower, the grass, the sky and a little butterfly creating a gradient by mixing the two different colours, painting it where they meet and blending it in with a dry brush. Now to get rid of the background and make the textures for our sunflowers and grass, we go into GIMP as it's free. We drag in our image and scale our layers down, then add a new layer and merge all visible layers. Now if we use the fuzzy select tool and mess with the threshold and click cut it will make the background transparent. You can then move parts of your UV map around using the box select tool and the unified transform tool until you get something you're happy with. I then load Blender and import my image as a reference and start modelling the stem. Here's a quick trick. Start with the cube, merge all vertices and boom, you've got a single point to extrude from. It's a fast way to block out organic shapes. Then click Ctrl left click to extrude the stem, moving the vertices around to match the reference. I also want to add a skin modifier to add a bit of thickness and with all the vertices selected I click Ctrl A to make them thinner. I then scale the different vertices accordingly using the same shortcut. I apply the modifier, add a subdiv modifier and shade smooth and then move around the vertices to match. Also moving parts of the stem in the Y axis giving it more depth. This is where it starts feeling like a painting. Add a new material and click Ctrl T to create an image setup. I add in our image, I unwrap with project from view and tweak the UV so the textures don't get stretched. Now, confession time, I painted the stem a bit dark, as I kind of wanted my scene to be quite colourful and fun. Instead of repainting the stem, I can just change the hue and the value slightly on the hue saturation node and plug it into the base colour. I can also make the stem shiny in different parts by plugging the image into the roughness and putting it through a colour ramp to change the values and do the same for the normal, adding a bump in between to give it a bit more of a bumpy painted feel. You could also use a normal map of some paintbrush strokes if you like. I just found this method looked better for my scene. For the leaves, add a plane, add a loop cut in the middle and move the vertices around to match and give it some depth. Now repeat for the other leaves, making sure you project each leaf by view and connect the alpha channels and just rotate around to your liking. For the disc, I add a circle with 12 sides, scale it to the reference and inset the faces so we can make it stick out slightly using proportional editing. I then make the spiky bits at the back of the sunflower by making another inset and extruding them out and scaling their individual origins. This next trick makes them feel more like tiny petals instead of mechanical spikes. I extrude an edge out for the petals, add my loop cuts and use the knife tool to cut out the general shapes. I then project from view, like before, implementing my texture I painted for the back of the disc. I also rotate some spiky bits and use different parts of the UV map. If you just followed along, congrats! Now that we have our awesome looking painted sunflower model, it's time to do the ground. We add a ground plane and subdivided it so we can use proportional editing to give it some bumps. We then shade smooth. I then made cutouts for each grass as a separate object and duplicated them and rotated them in the z-axis by 90 degrees. Now we grab our grass, which I separated into three objects and we move them into a collection using the shortcut M. Now we want to make a particle system on our ground plane and render as a collection based on our grass collection. We also want to make sure advance is checked for this so we can mess with the rotation. You can increase or decrease the amount of grass and edit the ratio using count. Just have a play with different settings. These are the settings I use for my grass. For the sky, I just import images as planes from a version I edited in GIMP. I scale it up and slightly change the hue and saturation, and set two keyframes, one at the start of the animation and one at the end to give the illusion that the clouds are moving, and right click to set interpolation to linear. Subtle camera movements equals instant production value, so I also animate the camera with a slight rotation and move it closer to the sky. To make my butterfly, I model the wings using the knife tool and the body, using extrusions and scaling. And for the top view, I project from view like before. For the flapping, I go into object data properties and add a shape key basis and move the wings down. I then add a new shape key and move the wings up this time. Now we can animate the flapping. We set the shape key's value to zero and keyframe the value and then move four frames to the right, changing the value to one and keyframe it again and alternate our keyframes until the end of the scene. A pro tip is don't over animate. Just a little randomness goes a long way. So I added a noise modifier for the rotation and location and the Z axis. I also had a shape key for the sunflower as the butterfly passes it. For the final bit, I added a simple skybox and add some area lights and added a very simple vignette with a blend and use the Kawashara filter for that painterly finish.
All right, thank you for watching, guys. I hope you got some value from this video. Next, I might try some PS1-style modeling. If that sounds cool, drop a comment and subscribe. Thank you.